Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about the overview of how to get started with freelancing as a beginner. So let's get started. First, let's start with realities, expectations and mindset. This is often an overlooked step in the freelancing journey. I mean, so easily we want to talk about the skills and you know the strategies on freelancing, but we often neglect this vital step. It's pretty self-explanatory, but just to go through this, let's start with difficulty. You know, some of us deal with things or find things easy or challenging. You know, that's just the, the way that we are wired and we just need to be aware of that. Time. So the reality is some of us may become high earning freelancers in a really short amount of time, maybe a few weeks or a few months. But the reality is for most of us, it often takes quite a few months or maybe even a few years. Very important is mindset. So how are you when you are focused? Do you actually focus on tasks or are you distracted? How well do you handle rejection? Because the truth is most clients will say no. Are you going to stop when you hear two no's or are you going to continue? And very important is starting small. I think it's so easy to be hard on ourselves. You know, we've got this certain expectation of, you know, reaching out to 10 clients and, you know, nine of them or two of them say yes. And then, you know, things go well from there, you know, but the reality is it often doesn't work out that way. And we need to start out small and we need to be able to handle rejections well. The other thing is resources. So how much money do we have at our disposal? How well connected are we with connections socially or maybe even politically? And how much time do we have to dedicate to freelancing? Because the reality is we've all got different backgrounds. We've all got different responsibilities. Some of us have families to take care of. Some of us are students. Some of us just really have more time. Some of us have less time. So. I mean, that requires compromise, you know, are we willing to make those compromises? The next is knowledge. What type of knowledge do you currently have? I mean, if you are currently a developer or web designer, sure, it can definitely be way easier for you to freelance on the side. But let's say you are, let's say someone like Danny Thompson, you know, who started frying chicken. And uh, he, I mean, it's an, he's got an amazing story. He had no coding knowledge whatsoever but he turned it around and his knowledge base started from nothing the other one that is probably most neglected is taking risks and the thing is risks are good but taking calculated risks need to be taken because the truth is you're investing a lot of time and focus and energy often making certain compromises when you could let's say be spending time walking on the beach or seeing friends and all that. But now you're actually working on a freelancing business. There's some risk involved with that. But as a side note, there's also risk in keeping your job. The truth is that the future is uncertain. I mean, we can make certain calculated risks and assumptions, but ultimately there is some form of risk, whether that's investing in stocks or investing in pretty much anything in the future. So I think the mindset and approach needs to be one of reality because the truth is your freelancing career might not work out do you have a backup plan or are you aware of that in making your decisions i think before i want to move on to you know the freelancing aspect of it maybe i can just share very briefly about how i got started with freelancing so I started with fiverr and i know that people have a bad rap uh, you know when thinking of Fiverr and they give Fiverr a bad rap for that matter but the truth is it worked for me so what I did was I thought of it a bit differently to how others thought of it so I mean for those who are aware of Fiverr and places like Upwork and all that you pretty much just post you know your service and you hope that a client contacts you but if you think about it if you had to post a web design you know service or web development service or coding service you are essentially competing with hundreds if not thousands of others so how can you flip that around how can you think strategically about you know 
standing out amongst the crowd and that's pretty much the thought process that I had so I sort of I mean if you can sort of visualize a triangle I sort of flipped it you know the other way around and that is I wanted to do a website analysis report so what I did was it's a very simple thing where I charged um, five dollars and it was and the title was something like uh, conversion rate optimization report or website analysis report something like that and what it was was a two to three page PDF document where I would go through the client's website and give advice on what they could do to improve their sales and their design and all of that very simple but the key thing here is I over delivered I mean, my fee out of this $5 was $4 after uh, 5 is 20% uh, uh, cut at the time. So for $4, I mean, I really spent probably about two or three hours on this, uh, you know, report. And the truth is I didn't make money from it uh, in, in the bigger scheme of things, right? If you work out my time and effort and all that. But I was thinking again, long term, because now what happened after I delivered the website analysis report, I had to make sure it was good. I had to make sure that it left a good impression. Once it did, I upsold the client to a hundred dollar wireframe. So picture it, I've got a two to three page PDF. Hey client, here's your suggestions. Boom. Now I said, okay, would you like me to actually create a visual representation of my suggestions? And that's just a wireframe. I just went in think it was Photoshop or even a uh, PowerPoint back in the day <laughs> and I just sort of created like you know my suggestions on what I think the client should do from a design perspective now very important again I over delivered I really went the extra mile so the next thing I did was after delivering the wireframe I upsold the client to actually implement and design or code this wireframe and that I sold for a thousand dollars again that might seem like a small amount for you but at the time I was I mean this was really my first paying client and um, yeah I wanted to charge a small amount and it was good enough for me I was still learning on the job really I really only knew the basics but the awesome thing about this is I really aimed to over deliver and as you can see in the final point here from this client alone, this was in 2015, from this client alone that resulted in eight websites, that resulted in a monthly retainer, and that resulted in referral clients. So also another interesting side note is that this client is still with me today. So it's amazing how it turned out, you know, from $5 to, you know, five figures, multiple five figures. And I just want to add one thing, and uh, the monthly retainer, I'll get into um, this uh, in, in, you know, mentioning future more strategies, but this is very important. So what I did was I charged $250 a month for certain marketing services. Eventually, the client ended up paying $1,000 after getting results and after a few months. So you, the point is, and the mindset is, don't be afraid to start small because this can often lead to upselling your client as they get more uh, results. It can uh, lead to more loyalty. It can lead to referrals. So again, stressing the point in the first slide that I mentioned, and that is starting small. All right, let's move on. So this is what I want to talk about in this video, and that is how to start freelancing. But I want to go through a few points, right? And that is your skills, positioning, niche or generalist, services and pricing, getting clients, and analyzing and improving. Now, let's start with minimum skills to start. And the truth is, you do not need to know all of these fancy frameworks and all that. And I actually tweeted out something recently. I said something like, if, if you are wanting to freelance and you are waiting to master X framework, you're going to be procrastinating for a very long time. The truth is all you need to know is how to make a website. How you do it really does not matter. So in my mind, you can, I mean, that starts with like HTML and CSS, you know, code, or what's gaining a lot of popularity these days is no code. So that's things like, you know, WordPress or Webflow. 
And even from a from an e-commerce perspective, things like Shopify, so many freelancers do incredibly well without even knowing how to code. It's a benefit. It is not a requirement. And I want to stress that point. So I just want to encourage you not to overcomplicate this. Moving on to positioning. And when it comes to freelancing, much like any industry in business for that matter, you've often got businesses who focus on the generalist side or you've got the niche side. And very often you'll find that even what you think as a generalist business is often a niche. Let's not get too much into detail here, but when it comes to freelancing, the way that I think of generalist and niche is on the left-hand side, I've got generalist, and that's almost like, let's say, you, you're fishing uh, in the ocean, right? For any types of fish, um, you know, you might catch sharks or whales or, or whatever, but, um, I mean, you're not fussy, right? Versus a niche or niche, and that is very particular because now you are fishing in a lake, so in a much smaller pool. But if you want to niche even further, you can fish, you know, let's say for only salmon or only certain types of fish. So from a generalist side, again, your focus is any type of business or any type of client. From a niche side, that's more focused on a platform, industry, or language. And I'll sort of touch on that um, uh, briefly again now, but uh, just to summarize on generalist side, a generalist is actually a good place to start because it often gets you, well, I mean, it gets you experience, you know, and it's often the easiest way to, to get started, which I'll get into getting clients uh, later on. But what's nice about starting off as a generalist is you can essentially test what type of niches you would like to explore in the future. So let's say, for example, after a few months or maybe a year or two, you've got a few clients and you've got experience in different industries. Maybe you've worked with two lawyers or, you know, two plumbers or two florists, and you actually really decide that you like one of them. And it's always better. And I'll explain uh, why shortly. And that is about niching down. So I think the best way, if I, if I can try and explain this as simply as possible, but to stress the key benefit here, and that is being a generalist is not wrong, right? I mean, you've got many generalists who actually do pretty well, but it is, it is actually getting to become a saturated market because what separates you from your nine-year-old niece who also makes websites? The thing that I like about niching down is that it is better positioning for the long term. So what's nice about it is, let's say you focus on dentists or lawyers. Uh, well, in that case, let's say um, smilemarketing.com, a dentist, uh, I mean, uh, their website and marketing agency for dentists, and paperstreet.com for lawyers, seoplumber.net for plumbers. And what's key about these agencies or niched um, agencies is that They've got a whole team behind them, and that is the beauty about freelancing. You can start out solo and then eventually outsource and grow into an agency. But I think that's for another discussion. The point is here, niching down. And what's nice is, let's say the case of smile marketing is, they are known to help dentists. They are not known to help small businesses or you know any types of businesses. They are, they are known that they specialize in helping dentists, so they can tailor their marketing, their advertising, their messaging accordingly. And not to dig digress too much, but I mean, you can serve, let's say, multiple niches, um, but that I think, again, you know, is for another discussion. But the point is that niching down is in the long term way more beneficial. And again, I mean, you can even niche down based on, you know, the type of platform, let's say like Shopify, or maybe, um, you know, like the stack could be like headless CMS or anything. And very often you'll find freelancers and agencies who specialize only in those key areas. All right, so now a very important section, and that is your services and pricing. The services is actually pretty straightforward, so I'll go through that now, and that is what type of services you can offer. And the truth is that all knowledge can be learned. 
The nice thing about web design and marketing and these things, it might seem overwhelming, but it's actually pretty simple. If you compare it to five years or 10 years of study on you know, a university or college degree, all of this stuff can be learned like in, within a few months, maybe a year, and you can really learn more than most people online, on YouTube, you know, um, on Udemy or any types of courses, which is awesome. So not to digress again, um, but services, web design, that's creating websites, content marketing, that's, oh, sorry, content writing, that is um, writing blog articles, social media management, SEO, search engine optimization, which is the process of ranking uh, your website or client's website on search engines, i.e. Google, ads management, that could be things like Facebook ads or Google ads management, and then you can also offer hosting or priority support. Now, very, very important, and that is you might feel overwhelmed with all of these types of services. But the awesome thing about these services, everything can be outsourced. Outsourcing is not for everyone, right? But if you want to scale, if you want more freedom, if you want to step back a bit more, outsourcing is great. So for example, if you enjoy web design and you don't enjoy the marketing stuff, outsource that side. If you enjoy the marketing side and don't enjoy web design, vice versa. All right, so now let's move on to pricing. And pricing is a very big topic. I don't want to, um, you know, go too much in detail um, on this. So I just want to cover the nuggets here, right? As you can see, value-based pricing is at the bottom. You can see that that's ideal in my mind. And at the beginning stages, let me start it off. At the beginning stages, this might not be practical for you. You might be better suited to charge fixed pricing, maybe even hourly, which I'll get into shortly. All right, let's just break it down. So hourly is very simple. That's when you charge your client your hourly rate. And that is, how do you work out your hourly rate? You just work out your desired income and you divide it by you know how many hours you wanna work in the whole year, uh, including vacation uh, days. And you literally just give your hourly rate, maybe add some, some meat to it and boom, there you go. So from an hourly perspective, let me just share why I do not like hourly. Two reasons. Number one is I think it discourages efficiency and it actually um, it doesn't reward your experience. So let's say from an experience point of view, let's say you wanted to charge, you know, like you, you think you're experienced. So you can charge, you know, $150 an hour, let's say. And a client comes to you and says, hey, I want to create like, you know, a three page e-commerce website. And you know that based on your experience, you can whip this out in like four hours if you've got the logo and the images and boom, done, you know. So now you take your hourly rate, 150 times four, $600, you know, took you four hours. And I mean, I mean, the truth is, yes, I mean, that's, that's really not a bad am amount at all, but I mean, <laughs> you would need like so many clients throughout the month just to be able to sustain that, right? Whereas if, for example, you charged, let's say a fixed price or value-based price, you could say something like, okay, fine, I will charge you one and a half thousand or 2000 for this website because I'm experienced, because I know what, you know what I'm doing and because I know the value to you, whether I take two hours or eight hours, it really doesn't matter. They're getting the outcome on what they paid for. And as I men mentioned for earlier, uh, it discourages efficiency. So that means like, let's say you found a plugin or a framework or some code snippets or an existing template to literally slash your time by 80%. I mean, why would you want to use it? You know, because you're essentially getting paid for your time, not your outcome. So that's just really, you know, on the surface level, an 80-20 answer. Fix, fixed pricing is, um, I sort of alluded to it a bit earlier, but that's sort of like where you work out your minimum desired amount that you would like to accept for, you know, this project. Let's say uh, you're used to earning, let's just say, let's just work round figures, $5,000 a month. And um, obviously, you know, if the project is going to take you a full month, you just can't charge less than 5,000. So in this case, you might charge 7,000. So it's really pretty simple and straightforward. Value-based pricing is a little bit more, I would say, specific, right? So there's also a couple of things that you need to consider. You need to work out your minimum desired amount that you would like to accept and let that be your benchmark. So you know that you will not be willing to accept anything less than that. And that is your starting point. But the essence of value-based pricing is, it is this at the core. 
you are charging a price based on the potential return that your client could make after your website changes and or marketing services. So let's say for example, that your client sells like 3D printers and they sell it on average, let's say for $10,000 a month, uh, sorry, $10,000 per printer. And you know that they sell, you know, let's say 10, 10 a month. So they make 100,000 a month, right? And you know that based on your experience, maybe it's through conversion rate optimization or from actually working with other clients in similar industries that you could increase the sales by 30%. So that's an additional $30,000 a month which is great so then what you would do in your proposal is you wouldn't say 30,000 a month you would work it out in, a, in an annual price 360,000 and then you would sort of base your price generally between on the low end 8% but up to about 12% so let's just call it 10% you know of the value so it might be let's say 30,000 for this project that's obviously a an higher example. Uh, usually I would use low examples, but that just sort of illustrates the point of using value-based pricing because it's more like a share of the profits in a way or the return on what could happen with your changes. Okay, now let's talk about a very important topic and that is how to get clients and find work. The truth is that without clients, you do not have a freelancing business. You have a hobby. And I don't want you to have a hobby, I want you to have a freelancing business. So point one on how to get clients, and that is friends and family, it's often overlooked, it's really straightforward. Just let them know that you offer web design or marketing services. It's really straightforward. They might know of someone if they do not have any businesses themselves. The other thing is freelancing websites or directories. I mean, there's so many places you can look here, especially with the remote work booming. These days, I mean, literally just having freelancing websites for, you know, let's say website, uh, web designers, web developers, marketers, and you'll find plenty of websites. Uh, paid advertising, and that is things like, um, you know, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, uh, Google ads, uh, trying to promote uh, your services that way, and manual outreach, and that is a report. So this just requires a lot of time, but it is effective. So for example, if you were to type in, let's say, on Google, like something like uh, landscapers in Dallas, just an example, and you just looked at a few uh, websites there, particularly those who are already advertising on uh, Google ads because it shows that they're spending money, that they are more serious, and also people who are on the second page and third page of Google. And then what you do is you go through the website and you see if you can make a you know design suggestions to optimize the website to get better results. And then you send them an email to say, hey, here's your report uh, you know, that I made for you. Let me know what you think. And then obviously with the call to action being contact you to offer more services. That's just the gist on the outreach. And then you've also got like Instagram uh, outreach on the DMs. You've got plenty of different uh, outreach, but that's sort of the core of it. You want to add value. You want to share you know, what, what, they, what you can help them with and then just let them you know, contact you. And this is very much a numbers game. Very often you would need to reach out to like 50 plus or 100 plus uh, before you start getting some good leads. The other thing is social media, that's pretty um, self-explanatory and that is just sort of building a presence on social media to let others know, uh, you know what type of services you offer. Then finally, your website, and this is pretty much my favorite one, and that is you know, building your freelancing website or your agency website and promoting your services on that. The one thing I do want to stress on your website, and that is blog articles. It is great for generating SEO leads on my uh, agency websites. I get a couple of leads every single month purely from SEO, and a big part of that is blog articles. So for example, let's say you're interested in focusing on dentists, let's say, and you know, you could say something like um, why every dentist needs a website or how dentists can generate more patients, you know, anything that is relevant to them, put yourself in them in their shoes, what they would type on Google, you know, maybe it's like web design services for dentists or marketing services for dentists, whatever it is, you want pages and articles to show up on Google so that you can get free leads. The other thing is a free ebook, and that is, uh, you know, sharing credibility. You know, you, you want to sort of be an authority in that industry and niche. So just write a simple ebook 
put, you know, write it on a Word document, Google Docs, save it as a PDF, get a, get a um, cover from Canva and just create something valuable and then uh, create like an email form so that they have to um, download it and then you can upsell them via an email sequence. If you're really good at speaking or, or you know, in front of a camera and do, do a podcast or videos, but the main thing is you want your website in this case your portfolio agency website to be cta focused what is cta focused that is call to action focused so the point is you want your visitor your prospective client to take a desired action what is that desired action is it to get a free website analysis report is it to get a quote request is it to contact you you know is it to download the ebook what is it the bottom line is you want to make it simple and clear and focused so the key takeaway here is you want to be clear and not clever. Keep it simple. All right, so here's my final tips wrapping up. Start and start small. Deliver good results for your clients because very often this really leads to referrals and you cannot keep a good freelancing business if you deliver bad work. Focus on your recurring income. Avoid the income valleys. It's very easy to get once off work but what you want is recurring income. And one way that has helped me is to offer marketing services. Again, if you don't enjoy marketing, outsource it. It really does help. And lastly, that is keep learning and improving. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope this helped you. And I know you can do it. Freelancing has changed my life. And it is not easy, but I can tell you it is worth it. Thanks so much.